Uh, next year, take my talents to the NBL and okay. play for the Illawarra Hawks. Excellent, over in Australia. Yep. What is next for LaMelo Ball? We all know that he's now joined the Illawarra Hawks in Australia in the NBL League. He's paired up with RJ Hampton, not in the same team, but in the same league. And this is the type of thing that we're now going to see more of, where players don't really go and join the NCAA and instead go to an international team. A lot of them will go to Australia in the NBL League, because obviously it's an English-speaking country, it's still very high competitive basketball. But other countries like China, they will get a few players. They only a few years ago got Emmanuel Mudiay, who went top 10 in the NBA draft. So obviously there's a lot more international teams that are willing to take on college prospects, but rather not play in college and play overseas. Now before I get started, I really want to know what you guys think LaMelo Ball's future will look like. And if you enjoy this type of video, let's see if we can reach 1000 likes for the next video and let's get into it. In Australia, the NBL has become a new destination for players looking for a year of competitive play before they are eligible for the NBA draft, and a perfect alternative for those who are trying to physically prepare for the NBA. The NBL is still an NBA ready league. We get guys from the NBA who are veteran players and they need to go overseas and prepare because the NBL is a ready made league. These guys play professionally. They are grown men who actually rely on the NBL to make a living. This isn't just some easy league for any teenager to join. This is still a professional league. As LaMelo Ball stated himself, the NBL has a great strength and conditioning program. I heard they got great uh, strength and conditioning over there. So off the court, that'd be good. And then on the court, you know, Pros been through there, stuff like that. So I yeah. think it's all gonna help. And it's just best for me, I think. So overall, what does he need to achieve in the NBL? And we're gonna break it down exactly as how he can make it to the NBA through what he does in the NBL. We're gonna look at previous plays in the NBL and look at a few comparisons. Obviously, the NBL has a long history of developing great young players. Many of them have gone to do great things in Australia, Europe, and of course, in the NBA. And the signing of LaMelo Ball is just a testimony to that. Terrence Ferguson, a current starter for the Oklahoma City Thunder, only averaged 4.6 points, 0.6 assists, 1.1 rebounds, shooting 38% from the field, and only shooting 60% from the free throw line. And he was still selected 21st overall. And that is actually insane considering that those are very bad numbers and he still got a top 20 pick basically. Now let's look at a guy who's not in the NBL and he actually got drafted this season. Sakur Dumboya. He played in France this year. He went top 15 in this NBA draft. He only averaged 7.8 points per game, 3.3 rebounds, 0.7 assists, shooting 48% from the field while shooting 34.3% from three. Once again, those stats are not insane, but it was still good enough to be a top 15 pick in this year's NBA draft simply because he played against men at a professional level. Let's look at another guy, Brian Bowen, who entered the 2019 NBA draft. He put up similar stats in the NBL at 6.3 points per game, 3.2 rebounds, 0.6 assists, shooting 45% and was a former McDonald's All-American, five-star recruit coming out of high school. And whilst he was not selected this season in the NBA draft, he immediately signed a two-way contract with the Indiana Pacers once the draft ended. Which therefore tells me that if LaMelo Ball can average close to 10 points, five assists, five rebounds, which doesn't seem like a lot, but in the NBL against bigger bodies and a different style of play isn't easy, but at the same time, it's not ridiculously hard, while still maintaining an efficient shooting percentage, 10 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, there is no doubt in my mind that LaMelo Ball will be a top 5 draft pick in next year's NBA draft. But then again, it's much easier said than done. Now, maybe not a top 5 pick, but he will definitely get drafted if he can even average 6 points, 5 assists and 5 rebounds, in my opinion. And I think he's definitely going to do that. LaMelo Ball will now experience a more professional route in order to exceed greater expectations at the next level. And while he has done this in Lithuania, this is what he has to do from now on to make it to the NBA from the NBL. I'm trying to be the number one pick for the 2020 draft. His situation is a little bit different to RJ Hampton, considering that RJ Hampton actually had the choice to play college, whereas LaMelo Ball didn't, considering he was already a professional player, and that means he can't make an NCAA team. He said, and I quote, I'm really looking forward to playing professionally this season so I can focus all of my time and energy on basketball. LaMelo is purely fueled up on taking his game to the next level and Illawarra seems like the perfect fit as it's a hardworking blue collar city. In the past though, critics have been labeling LaMelo Ball as lazy, careless, at times arrogant, 
And this has been since he was only 14 to 15 years old, where he played with his brothers in high school. Now he's part of a blue collar city, he will actually have to work and he can't just play arrogant in the NBL or he will get punished. But in my opinion, I think a lot of people hate on the old Lamelo Ball, the young Lamelo Ball, the kid Lamelo Ball. I feel like this guy has grown up a little bit. He's now six foot eight. He is still a teenager, but he seems like a guy that's taken that next step into being more of a mature player and a more of a mature person. Along with that, he also has his head coach, Jermaine Jackson from Spire Academy, which will help guide him in the right direction as he's a former NBA player himself. And I quote, having JJ with me has been incredible. His experience, guidance, and mentorship has been a huge benefit to me. And having him there in Australia will only continue to help me develop on and off the court. So why would Lamelo Ball choose the NBL? Well, the competition. Lamella Ball is in the perfect situation in my opinion, considering he cannot play college. As not only is he grasping scouts' attention through playing in an arguably more superior and dominant level all around compared to collegiate level, considering that the NBL is still a professional league, whilst I would say that the top level Division 1 colleges are really good and obviously scouts go there to watch these guys play, playing in a league like the NBL, which is obviously professional, in my opinion, is still as good as playing at the collegiate level. Because he will go up against well-established point guards, shooting guards, and small forwards who have proven their talents through playing in the NBA. The likes of Casper Ware, Bryce Cotton, Melo Trimble. Believe me, these guys are all trying to send a message to these scouts. They are still NBA worthy, and the only reason they're playing in the NBL is because they want to get back to the NBA. Lamelo Ball will be a young teenager playing against former NBA players. So if you think that these guys aren't going to take it to him, then you're completely wrong. They're going to show him that Lamelo isn't the only star in this league, and just because he has the hype, does he have the talent. And he better be prepared because these guys will try and make him look foolish on the court. Now, not only is LaMelo Ball competing with these former NBA point guards, he's also going to be up against the ESPN number 5 ranked prospect in RJ Hampton, another guy that signed with the NBL, but he's playing for the New Zealand Breakers. RJ, just like Melo, is also a highly anticipated point guard prodigy who was a top 5 pick projected, and therefore LaMelo will be competing against RJ Hampton on the draft board, and as he stated, my goal is to be the top pick in this year's NBA draft, and I feel like they can help me reach that goal. So with RJ Hampton and LaMelo Ball facing off against each other, it gives these NBA scouts a bit of an indication as to where these two players are up against each other and at a professional level. Another thing is his teammates. Along with LaMelo Ball's competition, his teammates are not a joke either. As the Illawarra Hawks also want to make a name for themselves, and they have players on the roster that want to play well because they also want to advance their future as an NBA prospect. Do you guys remember the former Houston Rockets point guard, Aaron Brooks? He joined the Illawarra Hawks not long after LaMelo Ball joined the Illawarra Hawks. Make no mistake, this man is not a joke. In his prime, he was putting up borderline 20 points per game with the Houston Rockets. And with Illawarra having him on the team, not only will he be a great mentor, but he's also going to be a great competitor on the exact same team because just like LaMelo, he probably wants to get back into the NBA too. Along with that, the Illawarra Hawks also have another established point guard in the former Cleveland Cavalier, Cedric Jackson, and a former New Jersey net power forward in Josh Boone. So there's a lot of NBA talent on this team. Not only will all these guys be able to mentor Lamelo, but they'll also be competing against him in practice and showing him the ropes in the NBL, giving him advice, but also, these guys don't want to finish off in the NBL, trust me on this. They want to go even further, and they want to prove why they're still able to make it to the NBA too. The media will also have a big effect on LaMelo Ball and even on RJ Hampton. There seems to be a wide number of opinions on how LaMelo Ball's draft stock will be in 2020. But some are incredibly high on him, some are quite low on him. With that said, ESPN have him ranked as number 33 in next year's NBA draft. Whilst the latest from the NBA draft.net came out one day ago, and they have balled drastically higher at pick number three. So with that being said, Lamella's draft stock is very unknown, and being in the NBL, it will create a lot of media hype, and that means his ranking will fluctuate quite a bit. If he plays well, he could go way up than 30 and 22 as ESPN ranks him, or if he plays bad, it could go way below that, and we just don't know. So the media is going to have a huge effect on how LaMelo Ball's ranking will be. And plus, we have to remember, LaMelo Ball is arguably better than a lot of the guys and a lot of the prospects in the NBA draft order at the moment. 
We have to remember that Lamella Ball was ranked at pick number 7 by ESPN before LeVar withdrew him out of his team at Chino Hills. So, Lamella Ball has a lot of hype, but how good is he really? At this point right now, at 17 years old, he's 6 foot 7, which is a lot taller than his brother. That's arguably a shooting guard small forward height in the league today, but he plays as a point guard, and he even has the potential to grow taller. Lamella Ball is a unique talent for the modern day NBA, with his size, creativity, ball handling, passing ability, and a deep shooting range. Yes, his shot form is a little bit weird, just like his brother Lonzo, but that can change. Once again, he is still so young. Lamelo's frame has changed drastically as he seems to be a little bit stronger and put on more muscle from the start of his senior season to now. And that is something that will definitely develop even further in the NBL because Australia definitely puts a lot of emphasis on making their players bigger and stronger. That's something that is actually fact in Australia. We tend to make our guys quite big and strong. You can just look at us against any team in the Olympics. We tend to be a little bit stronger and bigger than a lot of those guys, but we don't have the height. But Lamelo does. The one knock on Lamelo, like I said before, is his unorthodox shot mechanics, but that will be obviously evaluated by scouts, and if Lonzo got drafted, then obviously I don't see that being a problem for Lamelo Ball, especially it doesn't seem to be a huge issue when we actually watch him, considering he can basically get his shot off from anywhere he wants, while he can also take his man off the dribble. Lamelo's free casual style of play and inconsistent effort defensively may be his only lacking point. Through the NBL though, he'll be forced to play defense, because if he doesn't, he will be made a laughing stock. Although Lamelo Ball is 6'7", and he may be a little bit slower than some of the quicker guys in the NBL, I don't see anyone lighting him up. The NBL is known for its physical play, and it will pose a significant challenge for Lamelo Ball, who was only 17, and RJ Hampton, but... In the end, these guys will learn very quickly, so don't put too much pressure when they first play at the start of the year. With that said, if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know where you think LaMelo Ball will end up next season. Let me know what you think LaMelo Ball's future looks like. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on Instagram. That would be greatly appreciated. I'm going to be watching a lot of LaMelo Ball and RJ Hampton's games, so if you guys want to stay up to date with what I do and see some inside looks, follow me on Instagram because I'm going to be posting a lot on there. And with that said, it's been your boy Nick Smith. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I am out. Peace.